most would have seen by now. I used to, you know, robustly engage with my peers on a bunch of local, regional, and international topics. And um, sometimes on these platforms, on the internet, when you can't see anybody, you're not looking in anybody's face, it lends itself to, you know, a lot for a lot of youthful exuberance and inexperience. Um, my worldview since then has been opened. I've been able to live in two different countries since the time I would have authored that tweet. I've been able to interact with so many more people from all different beliefs, races, ethnicities, and sexual preferences. And I am lucky enough to consider some in the community right now friends. So I would, you know, um, there's, never, there's never any excuse for you know, making a comment about someone um, strictly based on their sexual preference. And I believe in equality for all people. All people, regardless of sexual preference, race, anything. My father um, was born and raised in very rural Guyana, humble beginnings. He was an orphan by the age of 12. And somehow, some way, was able to come out of that and create the legacy that all Bajans know his legacy is today. Um, he has been an extreme inspiration for me in my life. Um, he has taught me stuff through stories and parables and just actual, actual action. He didn't need to actually teach me anything because I saw him living a pure and conscious life just every day, day to day. And um, I'm just trying to make him proud. I'm doing what he would have wanted me to do, which is to stand up against the establishment and really make the voices of our people heard. Uh, first of all, I would love to thank the mighty Gabby for all the work he's done throughout the course of his life, putting Barbados on the map and not being afraid to speak up against what is wrong. I would love for him next time he has a protest of any simil similar sort to reach out to me because I would love to be involved. I would love to come out and I would love to, you know, be another voice to add to his cause of what is right and what is just. The situation that's going on in Dover, Gap, in Dover uh, St. Lawrence Gap, is a shame. Look out! Look at where we are out here. The action beat spot. Bajan owned, Bajan run, raw Bajan talent. The people in Christchurch East, I'm sure, are very grateful for that. Our people in Christchurch South are not able to enjoy those same freedoms. Why? Because look at St. Lawrence 20 years ago compared to now. We used to have locals selling coconuts on the beach. We used to have locals having little beach shacks, selling rum. We used to have people being able to rent beach chairs. And now that entire strip is being sold off to large multinational corporations for them to come in and put in huge, large restaurants, resort type things. And even, let's, let's say, I am a constituent who wants to rent out beach chairs. I can't do that now because on my beach, my beach as a constituent, these large corporations are putting up security guards and saying, hey, you know, only the resort's beach chairs can be rented out here right now. And now you've taken food out of my mouth. I, I, how am I supposed to survive now if selling beach chairs was my, my way of earning a living? Coconut vendors are suffering the same fate on these same beaches in Barbados. It is neo-colonialism neo at its finest. And we in Christchurch itself, and Barbados on a whole, should not stand up for it anymore.